same cost. So the first day TC, which replaces the P80, is always a solid rocket motor, which uh, has uh, much more propellant in it, of course. The second stage is also new, completely new engine, is uh, 36 ton instead of 23. And that's the key of the uh, improvement. Then, of course, we have also a bigger fairing to host our payload, to have more volume as well, and also an improved uh, Avum with uh, some new avionics as well. This base is the support for the Vega launcher model that was put here 10 years ago at the time of the maiden flight of Vega. Now it's being substituted because it's time to leave the floor to Vega C, the newcomer. My name is Renato Lafranconi, I'm the Vega Programs Manager and I cover this function since uh, April 2021. Buongiorno a tutti. Buongiorno. Good morning. So, Let's start our weekly meeting. I'll give you some feedbacks from, uh, from Kuru. I'm just back from there. Today the team reached uh, an amount of 65 members. And most of them are ESA members, but we also have specialists from French and Italian space agencies. Every member of the team is proud to be part of uh, this adventure, uh, which is uh, something that shows Europe at its, at its best. Uh, ambitious, uh, uh, agile, creative, and technically excellent. I mean, Vega C perfectly fits into the longer term uh, strategy for Europe of launches. We need guaranteed access to space, and Vega C is the medium class element of guaranteeing that. Of course, in addition uh, to Ariane 5 today and Ariane 6 in the future, and the micro launches at the other end. Ariane Space is what we call a launch service provider. Our role is to commercialize the European developed launchers under the leadership of ESA to both institutional and private customers. Vegasi is perfectly suited to serve the booming Earth observation market as well as the long-term institutional needs. It is this control center, which is used for all the launchers uh, in the, of the spaceport and for all the launches. This launch is very important because it is the first launch of Vega C. So, of course, there is a question of demonstration of the launcher, but also a question of demonstration of the capacity of the CAG to adapt in order to welcome newcomers. Tutta la fatica eh, provata nei mesi precedenti al lancio viene ripagata da un'enorme emozione che si prova in quel momento. E il senso di comunione è un qualcosa di indescrivibile. Quindi siamo pronti per bagacci. It really is Europe at its best. You really get to see all that hard work. Morning, Team everybody. Work and, in, and technology there involved in a project like this. It's just fantastic. And what an amazing show of emotion there from Francesca Maletta at the end of that clip. It just means so much to everyone involved as we edge ever closer to the end of this Vega C launch campaign. This and we thing. We really are edging ever closer this thing to the launch should go Vega very C, fast. The inaugural flight of Europe's shiny brand new rocket that we see right there. Really good shot there. Looking around the control center, I can see very nervous guests all at the edge of their seats. Uh, right, Dante, we heard in that last clip the concept of Europe having an independent access to space for commercial institutional launches. Can you elaborate on that? That the use of space is strategic for Europe with all the benefits that it brings. I hope and this so can only be ensured right. by keeping the capability to access Yeah, space. she's quick. This thing should go real fast off the pad. Daily life, and it will even so, more do so, this... Hey, the mission chef. That guy cooks all the food. Just saying. So, they're launching the Lares 2, which is an observation satellite, if I'm remembering correctly. But this is the first flight of Vega C. Vega C is the upgraded... Vega. You can see that's Vega C right there on the left, and that's old Vega right there. That's just regular the regular Vega rocket. This thing, on top of being a little bit bigger, is uh, has a much more powerful SRV first stage. It's a P120C, and uh, the P120C, that, that thing right there, 
is actually the, so the, that's the first stage for Vega. That's the side boosters for Arion Six. So this is this is in a way testing components for Arion Six. Uh, because the first stage is the side boosters. So, yeah, should be, this is the first flight of a P120C. That's why I got up for this, because this is actually really cool. That's the first time this rocket configuration is flying. Legacy brings the European autonomy. And what is Ariane 6? Ariane 6 is their next generation launch vehicle. That's the new one. Here, let's see if they talk about Freedom it here. Of action of space there it is right there. Needs see? that Europe can launch at any time any key mission replying to our own needs of the continent on the global geopolitical scene. Space is bringing fundamental See back there? data on, for our life on Earth. That's five, that's six. Vega C has the capability to launch in particular Earth observation satellites. Earth observation satellites. I just satellites woke up. Inhibit, I, I didn't see Electron, I fell asleep. The functioning of our climate, our metrology, hazardous situations with fires eruptions of volcanoes but also for security through monitoring the respect of international treaties you need this monitoring capability so it really brings an added value added services to the citizen and the life uh, of every uh, woman and man on this uh, small blue planet and with that i think it is very well invested money Well, for those who have just joined us and, and why on earth, what on earth have you been doing if you have, we are in the final 10 minutes of the countdown to the first Sleeping. ever launch of Europe's new versatile hey, rocket, the Vega C. This just means so much for Europe as a whole, and we'll be covering this game-changing launch uh, all the way to the payload release, and oh, we'll be geez, covering some of those benefits for science and Water geese, how are you? Europe and the world. I'm Matthew Russell of the Interplanetary Podcast, and I'm joined by Dante Gali, Vega expert and the hey, Space Matthew. Rider Program Manager, no less. Uh, Ooh, Space Dante, Rider. Are you getting excited now? Definitely, definitely. We are less than nine minutes from the liftoff. We are really close. We are now seeing still the uh, green parameters uh, saying us that everything is set and ready for the launch. Yeah. So are you handling? Got Meteo, that green I one. I feel the like trash, dude. Saying that the weather, the high winds there are good to go. We're good for a launch. So yes, that. we just received confirmation. Well, oh, there you go, Stacker. That's course. cool. Okay, so no strong wind at high altitudes. That can be risky for a launch. Forza so Vega. Also received this La Machina day. Grande. Well, everyone here at Europe Spaceport has been working hard. I read a little bit about months. them, Isaac. Dante, yeah. can you talk us through these last few months of operations and preparations? Someone, your audio isn't right. working? So if I call you a doofus... Oh, you're here. Damn it. Hey, how you doing? In Europe and hey. Transfer through ship trucks. To the French Guiana in the cool Weird boat. European and trucks. Uh, uh, transferred to the launch site thanks to dedicated uh, truck. And then once there, the real phase of the launch campaign. Yeah, see, that's, start, of course, that right the there is the key here. The P120C. That thing is a monster. It's a gigantic site, SRB. That's really good. We call it the Fargate. With so ah, Cometo. Gently... Uh, Cometo, the first of course. Stage into the mobile country. Once we integrate the first stage, then we vertically integrate the older stages of the rocket thanks to a traveling crane. Here, you and just this grab this is, thing with uh, a rope. We have to take really care of this operation, and mostly we have to all stages the except the last the one. Hypersonic are SRBs. Yeah, Vega has a first, second, and third, third and SRB the stages, and then a third. Hy or the fourth, uh, fourth one is a hypergolic. That's Le that's Leris too, right there. The golf ball. Cool, huh? Into the ferry, the top part of the launcher. Then the fairing itself don't drop is, uh, it. Yeah. Please don't drop it. Ooh, look at the crane. See the crane up there? Ah, very nice. Here you can see the very last nice. operation before very the nice. And here we have the transfer occurred more or less one week ago. And you can see Where's the, the pickup gray trucks? tube is air conditioning so to keep the satellite protected during all its life up to the moment of the release. I like it, Sammy. Shiny new equipment. Very nice. With the traveling crane, we very have nice. a vertical integration of the fairing. See, there, the there's, the there's the third or the, the fourth stage. Did you see it, Hypersonic? It's called, it's Avum Plus. 
but it's not finished. Uh, we have lot of it's a hypergolic third, hypergolic liquid, pressure fed third stage. Out, so to see that everything is set for the oh, flood. dude, and that thing is a monster. Four hours ago, we had this amazing rollback of the mobile gantry. So the rocket is ready and has to be set free to fly over the sky. To fly and over, over the, the sky. Gantry, slowly, 100 meters far away from the rocket 330 oh, feet that is, <laughs> that's absolutely incredible all that Someone. all that rocket though to get a small payload up see space, no the of you the say that oh ferrari isn't working no this is avio but italian rockets the most italian equipment is about the passion okay it is about a very nice very fiery passion now sometimes that does not work with the car the car has a lot of fiery passion. It does not work correctly. But with the rocket, you want it to, you want it to passionately have fire coming out of the bottom. Or else it's, it will, that's, that's bad. You want it to passionately have a lot of fire coming out of the bottom really fast. Pronto. Over two rates for 100 meters, and the same concept we use also for the Real Six. What are comparable the rockets to Vega C size wise? Antares is a good analog. It's even bigger, 100 meter height. God, that's absolutely crazy. I've heard that it's the more work than a Cal autopilot I don't know, maybe. Yes, but with wheels, <laughs> but with wheels moving back. So we are heading into the last four minutes now, a really significant moment, and we'll probably See, hear the that, DDO that chef announce He's the, the significant guy that cooks all the food. synchronized sequence. And so we're heading up to that point. We last can see him there, Frederick. At tous de DDO, attention pour la séquence finale lanceur. Stand by for the final everyone. count. We're going into the final. What is the metal sequence? wire on top of the four towers? H zero minus one minute. Explain the uh, synchronized sequence, Dante. The flight director just confirmed the start of the synchronized sequence. It's an automated sequence. I gotta take a break, someone. Step of the countdown before yeah. takeoff. It I, I gotta take a break, dude. Into correct it's not for COVID or anything. My back is killing stage. me. It covers yeah. all the operations that have to be executed in the last part of the countdown. The 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 and the payload in flight. Of staff <laughs> and premises and the availability of all the launcher redundancies. Because we have redundancies, we can not accept a single failure. <laughs> the commands and controls are performed by a remote ground control bench. And the main steps are check of the... Yeah, uh, Pythos, I had some... I had a lot more trouble than I care to mention getting to this seat this morning. Harming of security barriers. And we do even I saw it, Sebi. They're flying northeast. The of the bottom conical part of the stage with the so once again, the, this is the Vega, Vega C with the Lares 2 mission. This is the first flight for this style of booster. Vega C has never flown before. This is a much bigger version. We will have the so-called end over. So we will switch from the remote control bench uh, management to the onboard computer management. From that moment on, the, the uh, rocket will do yeah, all that's by because I lifted own. around stuff on the uh, yeah that, that's going to be a, a, an amazing right. moment uh, Dante just before we go into the last Messed minute of the lift. countdown uh, what should we all be expecting give us give us some kind of spoilers because this is going to be exciting right give us a spoiler about what we're about to see yes I was 10 years ago yeah the, the Europeans are smiling before time launch time it usually means Vegas something's going to go wrong flight the Europeans have to be very what amazed me was how fast it was that rocket is definitely are they flying a bigger fast. rocket this time you will see it jumping off the bed like using bolt bigger payload or are they going <laughs> further the no they upgraded so their cap to say something they upgraded the capability especially on the first stage the, the reason why they upgraded the capability on the first stage is to save costs believe it or not lols vegas's first stage is arian 6's side boosters that's a P120C. So they're, they're doing that to save costs. So one facility that can make first stages for Vega or it can make attachable boosters for Ariane 6. I need to jump off that launch pad like a Jaguar into the bright South American sky. Or not so bright, it's pretty cloudy. How long so until the launch? Join the conversation on social media and we're Top right, watching Mara. all we're... the special guests oh, actually. She held at 129. Watch this with their own eyes. Uh -oh. So hopefully I'll get to hear it. Uh, right, we're going to stop bothering on now to give you a chance to soak in the last minute before launch. So sit back and enjoy. Danto and I will be back during the first moments. There's a hole. Oh, What's red? We have a Ensemble de on the uh, on the screen. We're gonna so the computer's held it. So 
that red will probably mean that we'll not see the launch for a bit. So we have a red on the auto sequencer. Red light on the screen. Uh, can you explain that red? Yeah, get the paperwork yes. out. What happens is that we have a red from the uh, launch site, so the ensemble lancement, and that this uh, uh, has automatically stopped the uh, sequence. And if you can see, the uh, chronology is stopped indeed. And now we have to wait uh, for more updates from the flight deck. And, yeah, uh, hypersonic. It's understand. the auto. That, that's the auto sequencer. So the computers. Yeah, the so computers found something they didn't. They didn't like. From the flight deck. We are now in a holding pattern. But if you've just joined us, you are watching the inaugural launch of ASC here in French Guiana. A tous de DDO, arrêt du décompte suite à un rouge ensemble de lancement. Que tous les moyens restent prêts pour la reprise de la chronologie à H0-4 minutes en cas de retour au vert. So the red on the screen that stopped the countdown. Uh, what and did the, the flight DDO director say? just said that as we were in the automated sequence, uh, uh, a red uh, on any of the parameters automatically trigger the stop of the chronology, and he said just be all ready to uh, be prepared for an eventual announcement of a new uh, launch time, and and uh, and then uh, it will uh, announce whether we will be able to resume the countdown from Ash minus uh, four minutes. And as you can see, we are suspending the commentary for now while we wait for a new launch time to be announced. Please stay tuned because this is continually running and we will still. notify you the new time as and when we have it. Cool. So for now, uh, goodbye, but we will be back. Yeah, Ting, that's exactly what's going on. So you, uh, I get it that the Ensemble de Lancement, that uh, that's Launchpad, that's, that's the... If you want a literal translation, yeah, that's the auto sequencer, guys. So the, that's the sequencer is basically the, it, it is the launch pad, right? But it's it's the um, that's the auto sequencer. It's <laughs> the sequencer is ground side, and it'll transfer primary control of all critical systems when they go to internal power, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Something is weird with the auto sequencer. Love that they didn't do the stupid road to space this time. I guess the last Arion one, the last Arion launch really was terrible. I don't like that they use French terms even for me, a native French speaker. I can't understand any of their freaking terms. <laughs> Is it that bad? When is the decollage? It was supposed to be a second ago, but, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's come. I'll be all right. I have more back pain this morning than anything. I slept wrong. I, I was lifting stuff around this weekend and I, I did, I slept wrong. I slept like sideways. So I think I had a I had a back spasm. I can, I can like barely walk right now. It's really annoying. Don't get old. Don't do that. The sequencer is resume, it has uh, reset to four minutes here. Maybe it also has to do with the rocket being Vega, not the same companies working on the vehicle. Yeah, possibly. Why don't you go fix your little problem and light this candle? <laughs> It's all SRBs, yep, except for the fourth stage. The fourth stage is the Avum Plus, A-V-U-M Plus. Um, it's a pressure-fed hypergolic liquid fuel rocket engine. So what's the difference between Vega and Vega C? The first stage and the second stage are new, T-Man.
Yeah, and it's got a bigger fairing, that's right. Now, once upon a time, the Avon, Avon upper stage was made in the Ukraine. I'm not sure if it still is. I'm not sure if Avon Plus is made in, made in the Ukraine, but... It's a Ukrainium-derived upper stage. Fourth stage. The engines are still Ukrainian. Yep, so it still is. That's cool. Hey, laggy. Ugh. If the previous Vega left the pad like a bat out of hell, how's this Vega C going to leave the pad? This one's going to go very fast. Yeah. Yeah, you got a bigger first stage and a bigger second stage. That P120C is pretty powerful. Here's info on the primary payload. Lares is a... Okay, Lares isn't an imaging satellite. It's a, the measurement of the lens steering effect with an accuracy of about 1% to principal investigator to laser center to the team. Laser ranging data satellite. Cool. Beyond the project's key mission, Laris satellite may be used for other tests of general relativity as well as measurements of the fields of geodynamics and satellite geodesy. Nice. Uh, those I understood some of those words. <sighs> yeah, Megs, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in a hold right now, guys. Il Lancio de Vega si è stato posticipato. Rim. Rim. What is that? Riman. Riman. Rimanete. Con noi. <laughs> it says the launch of Vega C has been delayed. Stay tuned. But it's in Italian. Which is cool. Morning, drummer. How are you? So the rocket, they started to count down. They got to well, about one minute thirty, and the count stopped. They had a red light on Ensemble de Lancement, which means the auto launch auto sequencer. So, launch pad is what that translates to. Good translation. Thanks, man. Le sequencer de automatique. <laughs> Yeah, this thing is going to go fast. It's got a bigger upper stage, dudes. So, the count got down to 1 minute 30, and then they stopped. And they're... Discovery, go at throttle up. They're resetting the... They, they reset the count to four minutes and then promptly stop the webcast. Hey, Starch Face, 32-month resub. Of them is headed to a 5,893-kilometer 5, orbit. East. Discovery, go at throttle up. Canada, eight month resub. Thank you very much.
so once again, we're just in a hold here. So, so you're going to go back to sleep? I was just thinking that, floating. I'm going to go back to sleep, man. <laughs> uh, your boy's a little bit tired today. Verb. I want to go back to bed. Tom Bosley! Tom! Tom Bosley! A little tired. A little wired. But I think I deserve a little appreciation. Tom! Tom Bosley! Do we have any hardware from Space Rider that will be launched with this rocket? No, but there are some people from Space Rider in Mission Control. It's not an image, drummer. It's an overlay. Uh, I saw some birds flying around. <sighs> Birds were in animation, right? Sure they were. We all know they don't. Uh, here we go. Here we go. This looks very different from Arian 5's pad because it's not the same pad, team in Yep. Do we have any date for KSP2? 2023. Yeah, 2023. That's all they've said, Ting. So once again, we're in a four minute hold right now. The launch sequencer was reset after a hold from a um, from the first launch attempt. It got down to about a minute 30 and then the computer said no. The, the launch pad sequencer said nah, never mind. You sound tired. I am tired, Bone Sister. I don't really feel good today. <laughs> Discovery, go at throttle up. Got a few answers from Whitney's stream about why the, this stream is so much better. It's not made by Arian Space, but by the ENSA themselves. Oh. Yeah. Feel better soon, please. Okay. I'll work on it, man. McDuff, I'm a lurker, but I appreciate all your knowledgeable shenanigans. Thanks, man. Did you get any sleep? 
not any good sleep journey. I, uh, I slept wrong and aggravated a slip disc in my back, so I can I can't really walk too well right Jeremy, now. Go and throttle up. It hurts to stand up. You know, that's that's I'm sure that's fine. I'm sure that's not gonna be bad later at all. Hey, Bone Sister, give to the sub to my new ego. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. If we're able to jump on your back, it will fix it. Uh, the KSB2 trailer came out a week after I followed. Coincidence? I think not. So that means you're delaying everything, Sirius? Just throw out your back and get a new one. Well, I did half of that. No, the hell you wake up cooking with some oil and satisfactory. I I gotta go lie down after this, man. Maybe this afternoon we'll screw around with some satisfactory for a change. What is the payload? A gravioli detector. You think I'm kidding? Lares 2 is the mission. It is quite literally, you know, the gravioli detector from, uh, from Kerbal? Literally that. Where is this payload going to? Medium Earth orbit. Does it detect gravitational fields? Yep. Pretty much. It's a gravioli detector. Hopefully they get some good science from it if it launches. Ravioli detector? Well, yeah, what do you think I said? The weather, believe it or not, had a, was green, random. Yeah, me too. You haven't been here in a long time. I've played Dyson Sphere program, yeah. What is the ESA's launch frequency? It's somewhat analogous to ULA journey. So, I don't know, like it can range from like six to, tw six to 12 launches a year. Yeah, Phil, there you go. Hey, Frilled, what's going on? In which orbit is this going to operate? This is a medium Earth orbit. Mio. So about 600 kilometers circular, somewhere around there. Guys, I gotta, I gotta get some painkillers for my back. It's killing me. I can't, I can't freaking sit here. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'll be right back one second, okay?
Uh. Hey Gil, how you doing? We had some nasty storms last night in the mid-Atlantic. I hope Boston fared well. I got a couple of drizzles where I'm at, dude. How did Rocket Lab do yesterday? Mission success on L129. I think it was L129. Yeah, mission success, dude. They got another one launching real quick. No reuse this time, pal. Oh, no. I missed it too, Thomas. I fell asleep. Tried to at least. just be like me simply don't sleep you can do that when you're young someone you can't do that when you're old dude that's like the one like holy crap you're old thing that I've noticed other than that I feel fine like except for this back pain but that's more my fault than anything Threshold to be adjusted on telemetry. New T0 to be announced soon. Thank you, Thomas. How does sitting in your chair feel? Does it feel worse after sitting? It hurts, but yeah, I'll be all right, Journey. I, I, I don't need a medical analysis, okay? Let's just watch the launch. Yeah, McDuff, man, I got you. Hey, Ghost Winner, what's going on? So once again, fellas, Vegas was supposed to lift off about 20 minutes ago. Uh, they did have a hold uh, in the final count at about T minus 1 minute 30 seconds, give or take. It was like 129 or something. Uh... They did recycle the account, and they went back to a four-minute hold. Uh, we haven't heard much about what the problem is, but we do hear that a new T0 is being figured out. So they're getting uh, they're getting ready to um, to restart the count. Did you talk about booster second booster seven? It looks like it's back to the high bay with it. Uh, no, I haven't. Not since yesterday, dude. 40 minute hold, they said. 9.13 a.m. Get on your time. Okay. Oh. A tous de DDO, suite à retour au vert des moyens ELA, le nouveau H0 visé est à 12h13 minutes 17 secondes TU. Donc le temps des comptes redémarrera à 12h09 minutes 17 secondes TU. 20 minutes or 30 minutes. The Lancio de Vega si è stato posticipato a 12:13 UTC. I don't know how to say that. La nostra transmissione continuerà alle 1207. <laughs> Grazie. The up. 30 minute hold. Are you holding up? I'll be fine. 
I just gotta sit very still. <laughs> just gotta sit real still. Spinata. If there's one thing I've learned from watching rocket launches is that French Guiana makes Florida look like Arizona. <laughs> No, we don't want Spinala. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah, no. No mercy. Okay, what if it's just a little bit of spinala? Did you see the article I sent you? It might be a little too relate for Space News. Bouxy, I've... <laughs> Have you seen the article for Space News? I stopped the stream. I went to sleep. I woke up. I started the stream. Bro, that was like... We stopped the stream like six hours ago. Have you seen this new... No, I have not. I have, I have not. I've, I've done... All I've done is sleep, and badly, I might add. <laughs> Forlorn, you got another streamer interested in your channel by sharing these emotes. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. The rocket emotes are pretty cool. I haven't checked the article yet, man. Bronto. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm freaking... I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> oh, have you checked this out, bro? <laughs> no. <laughs> During the week, dudes, all I do is sleep and stream. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all I do is sleep and stream. I really don't do anything else. The Lara's 2 set looks interesting. Shiny disco ball. I agree. I agree. Uh, Boxy, so what's this? Let me see. Ha! <laughs> Yeah, no, we're not, we're not sharing that. I don't want, I don't want, yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not sharing that, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. Hey, Crow, what's going on, man? He's just cranky, he needs a nappy poo. Can you replace slip discs, Moto Man? Because if you can, then, yeah, that's, that's, that's why I'm cranky. I can't, I can't really move around. <coughs> Have you closely reviewed the damage to the orbital launch platform on stream? I did for about three and a half hours yesterday, Journey. Yeah, check yesterday's space news. I got a 3D printer and some power tools. I'll give it a shot. Uh... No. <laughs> so once again, if you're tu just tuning in, Vega was scheduled to go about 30 minutes ago, uh, and they had a hold in the in the final count sequence. Uh, that problem has since been worked, and a new T0 is 13 past the hour, so we're about 30 minutes out. There, make a robotic disc for your back. Oh. Oh, that's great. Uh, so, yeah, about uh, we're about 30 minutes, give or take. I think it's time for some fresh pots. No, no coffee. I'm going back to sleep. I'm going back to sleep after this. I should already be back in bed. But the damn launcher has to have a freaking scrub or in a hold. Of course it does. You go and jinx it now. Yeah, you're probably right. Oh, man. I'm really struggling here, dude. How long is the launch window? 
I'm not 100% on that one, Geeson, but since it's going to a higher orbit, so this thing's going out to medium Earth orbit, not low Earth orbit or high Earth orbit, it's going to Mio. We should have a little bit of a longer launch window. Had some leftover energy last night. Check your DMs for a text file. Oh dear. Oh, that's pretty neat. <laughs> hey, that's cool. Not bad. Would this be a 24 hour schedule, reschedule otherwise? Yeah, maybe. Crow, you bought a house a couple of months ago and just cleaned out the AC filter. I don't think the previous owners had cleaned that out in at least a year. It was caked. Oh. Oh, gross. My real estate, uh, my real estate agent Grove is pretty damn good, and he made sure that that was a provision for selling. <laughs> he made sure he made him clean out the AC filters, which is hilarious to me. Привет, <laughs> PY. What's up, man? You had your ducks cleaned, it's life changing, yep. Hey Exit, what's going on? It's, it's going okay, uh, we're just in a hold. The launch should resume pretty soon. Had a good sleep? Yet. Yeah. No, not at all. Did the house inspection find anything they need fixing? Yeah, this was like, the house inspection was like a month and a half ago. Uh, yeah, we found a, we found a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you if you sell a house you have to update it to modern code and some houses aren't built to code built to modern code because the building that building code didn't exist when the house was made. So even a house that's five years old might have some stuff that they that needs to be upgraded. You know, we, we did find some things and they were fixed, so. Oh, jeez, Matt. My brother-in-law bought a house where they had used styrofoam for insulation. Styrofoam. Okay. Basically gasoline. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Element, what's going on? It's good most people underestimate the amount of work that needs to be done if something is not up to standards. Yeah. My building inspector, Boxy, is a general contractor, so we made sure that it was done right. <clears throat> Jeez, Chrome. Yeah, Rockwell. Yeah, I got you. A house that we owned five years ago had extension cords in the walls between the outlets rather than the normal conduit. Wow. Fire hazard. Styrofoam, why not use budget cups? Nice. Man, that's not even a half of it. That's... Discovery, That's bad. Hey, Zolderlander. 66 months. Decollage. Top. <coughs> Too soon. <coughs> wait about wait about 20 minutes. 
That's crazy, Havix. Extension cord of the walls. That's that's rich. Wow. That's um, yeah, fire hazard. Why don't you just why don't you just douse your house in gasoline? Why not? Can't imagine EJ talking French during an entire stream. Le lancement de Vegas est reporté à 12 hour 13 UTC. Notre retransmission reprenda à 12.07. I don't know how to say numbers in French. Except for like 3.21 because they say it. Yeah, right, MRC? Like, I don't know why you'd do that. That's, like, more difficult than just... You could have just put a wire in. Nice to see you stream an ESA launch at this hour. Right on, Leroy. Treze? Treze douze. Ha-ha. You sound like Gunter Steiner speaking French. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Did you, did you see them in Austria this week? They look like a bunch of legends. They did not, definitely did not look like a bunch of wankers. <laughs> they looked like a bunch of rock stars. <laughs> Is a good excuse to slam my bro brother-in-law with fire marshal bill videos? <laughs> Girl, that's good, man. That's funny. <laughs> He said, there was a house fire in your village last year. The owner thought it was faster to burn the wallpaper off instead of scraping it off. Burn the wallpaper off? Wow. All right. Gunther's going to need an aircraft carrier at the end of the season. Well, this, Mick keeps driving the way he's driving with, with Kevin right behind him. Jeez, dude. Did you see the Atlanta race? I, I didn't get around to seeing it, Blue. I, I was, uh, I don't know if you guys, I don't want to make this launch too much about me, you know, but, uh, um, give me one sec. This is what I was doing while the Atlanta race was uh, was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a little, I was a little busy. I was a little, I was a little busy. <laughs> you know, a little busy. The trick is to not panic. Fire is your friend. Yep. Flame decals on the truck went, oh, jeez, burn it. Yeah, the rocket. We want to burn the rocket, not the truck. The truck isn't finished yet. Hey, Albert, good morning. That's right, McDuff. Yeah, you got it, buddy. I got a lot of work done on that damn thing. I got to figure out that fuel line thing, though. But, uh, yeah, I'll be able to do that when I go back to sleep. <laughs> So we're about 20 minutes out, give or take, uh, from the scheduled time for the Vegas Sea launch. It's 12.13 UTC. Coverage will begin at 7 past the top of the hour. It is 54 past the previous hour right now, so got about 20 minutes until launch. I saw you got the second DS tank in finally. Yeah, that's right, T-Man. Mm -hmm. Couldn't hook it up, though. The fuel lines, it's a long story. Uh, a few lines were cut because, yeah, Moonigan didn't wasn't expecting someone to ever put a rear tank in this thing ever again. So, <laughs> yeah, they uh, they cut that all out. So I got to figure out the fuel line solution now. <coughs> 
Did I tell you that the oil cooler leak on the Audi was actually just one of the lines that took an hour to fix? Nice. Discovery. Go and hey, Nuclear, on. what's the overall info on this launch? This is the inaugural launch of Vega C. Hey, Mick. How you doing, buddy? I was going to shoot you a message here in a Discovery. second. Go and throttle up. <laughs> This is the inaugural launch of Vega C. Uh, it's launching the primary payload as the Laris 2. The Laris 2 satellite. And L Laris 2 is a uh, gravity imaging satellite. Yeah, you heard that right. It's a. It's going to screw around with uh, lens steering effects, which is cool. That's really neat. Anyway, had better days, man. Yeah, I hear you, man. I hear you. I, dude, I'm pulling for you. Mercs told me what was good, and I was like, uh, okay, I gotta shoot you a message. Dude, why does Chrysler insist on putting batteries under the French passenger, uh, under the front passenger seat? Seriously terrible. I don't know why I said French. My brain's scattered right now. I don't know, Havix. I wouldn't put the battery inside of the passenger cabin. I think that's an idiotic idea, but Chrysler gonna Chrysler, dude. It's because the French, because they're owned by Stellantis. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, of course, Mick. Uh, yeah, dude. I'm gonna keep checking in, if you don't mind. As much as I possibly can, dude. I'm pulling for you. Stupid French passenger seat. It is mailed. <laughs> and I was like, uh, no. <laughs> the Rocket Lab launch is already over. <laughs> the Rocket Lab launch was about four hours ago. For sure, bro. Absolutely, dude. I got your back, man. You need anything, you you just give me a holler, all right? I'm serious about that. Not a car guy, so on Wednesday last week, when my start stop button went dead, I needed to find the battery to kill the car. Oh. Did you see the BMW seat warmer fiasco? No. Time out if you swear in a foreign language? Sure, why not? Uh, I'll take the 10 seconds. Okay. Mercedes puts lithium-ion 48-volt batteries under the passenger seat and 12-volt under the driver's seat. Why would you... Okay. French kids are shocked by these words. Merci. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Brimo's asleep, Mike. <laughs> Brimo doesn't get up for another hour. <laughs> hey, Super, how are you? Your health is more important than a launch. Yeah, that's why I didn't cover Rocket Lab last night, dude. <sighs> The BMW seat warmer function is now a paid subscription for $18 a month. Literally microtransactions in a car. Oh, Boxy, I'm never buying a BMW. Ever. Ever. Unless it's an old one. <laughs> Convince me to never buy your car. Yeah, I'm never doing that. Uh, I actually probably will never, ever buy a BMW. Ever. Just for that. Shame. Oh well. I really like E30s too. Vote with your wallet. Only in South Korea and you have the option to just buy the option in full. So that makes it better, Hotbox? No. No, no. No. This behavior needs to be nipped in the butt. Car, car manufacturers, no, no, don't, do not give them the wrong ideas, because then everybody will do it, don't do that. Hmm. 
Yeah, that sounds right, Havix. Yep. That episode had no chill. <laughs> I haven't seen that in forever, Crow. Super, you're doing fine, although it's constantly too hot these days. I hope you're doing better. Sounds like you're in the UK, Super. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing okay. I'll be fine, guys. Still have a red turn signal in the USA? I don't know. Wait, we don't have we don't have red turn signals. You can't have forward facing red lights in the US. You can't have forward facing red or blue lights because law enforcement. You have to have like amber flashers or something. Oh, that sucks, Havocs. Jeez. Random side question. Do we know when we could see more James Webb images tomorrow? Yeah, Martin, the launch got delayed a little bit for for uh, Vegas E. Uh, count should be resuming in about 10 minutes. 10 minutes now. Yes, we have rear red lights. Yeah, that's right. You can't have forward facing red or blue. That's very illegal. Western Germany, southern is even worse. They might get around 40C during the weekend. Damn, man. Heat waves. It's actually been pretty good here, super, uh, over in the northeast, like northeast part of the U.S. It's It hasn't been too bad, but that's because I'm near the water. When you're near the ocean, it stays nice and cool in the summer, and it stays nice and warm in the winter, believe it or not. Uh, I don't know if that's, I mean, you're, western Germany, not near ocean, not near ocean. Uh, I mean, unless you're up, I mean, up north a little bit, but. Yeah. Here in Europe, it's yellow front and back. Yeah. Wish it was the same over here. Southwest UK is surrounded by water and it's hot. Yeah. Where I am, drummer, yeah, it's, that's how it works in the Northeast. We have no rain for like two months. Ugh. Oof. Oof. 40C for the for Fahrenheit people is over 100. Easily over 100. <laughs> The European, the Europeans, the Europeans aren't designed for that. <laughs> Unless you're like Italian or you live in the south of France, it's not designed for that. Are you gonna play Satisfactory after launch? Maybe when I get back, Linus. Yeah, Europeans ain't designed for that. <laughs> uh, Juice Spot, five minutes or no, four minutes until launch coverage resumes, and about ten minutes until the launch from right now. It's just the top of the hour, dude. So seven past, we're at three past right now. Seven past is when coverage will resume. 13 past is when launch is supposed to go. You need to use Kelvin when you look at weather. Gives you a glimpse into the future, yep. We were built from minus five to 25 and that's it, yeah. <laughs> so I'm told, midget. <laughs> Yeah, let me be sincere. The USA would. Oh, ting. More Europeans telling telling Americans how to do things. Because that ended well the first time, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just a joke. Relax. Metric is easier. <laughs> ah, I'm French. Don't forget about Lafayette. Uh, Ting, actually, now that you mention it, it's almost time to storm the Bastille. Is it not? That's tomorrow, isn't it? Up, <laughs> oh, <laughs> drummer with the white flag. Found the Englishman. <laughs> uh, boy. Well, I want to joke about air conditioning considering what you had in Texas, yeah. Wee oui, wee. Oui. It's almost time to storm the Bastille. Storm the Bastille for democracy. It's pretty good. Just throw the tea in the swamp. Yep. Tomorrow's the national day. Well, yep. See? I remember that. I know what day Bastille Day is. 
How many Americans know that? Not many. Yeah. Tomorrow's a good day. Good day for you guys. It's like 4th of July. It's great. It's fantastic. <coughs> All right. Coverage should be resuming here in a couple of minutes. Let's see what happens. We're currently in a hold. There was an attempt to do the launch about an hour ago. And they uh, <coughs> cough. Okay, great. Good time to cough. Let's go. And uh, they uh, they had a hold at T minus 1 minute 30 seconds. Uh, the launch auto sequencer and the launch pad were not happy about something, but the ESA and Avio engineers have worked the problem, and we should be getting the coverage resuming here in about a minute, give or take, one minute, and then launch is about 13 past the hour, which is about seven minutes away. In Seville, it's 43C right now. Jeez, Crow, that's toasty. It hasn't gotten that hot here. We're hovering like around 26, 27, somewhere around there. Like here. Here's what it is in, in my room right now. So you have rejoined us after a, a stop there. It's 25 we have uh, four minutes on the clock, but there's actually six minutes, just under six minutes before we All right, launch. here we go. We are watching. The inaugural launch of Vega C, Europe's brand new rocket. Uh, Dante, tell us a little bit about that excitement that we've just had. Yeah, take um, it down, the, Alex. We had a uh, uh, something uh, here. Analogy, Swamp thing. Uh, but, uh, Ten we months to solve uh, the issue that was uh, uh, a parameter out of tolerance has been solved, and now we are back heading towards the automated the sequence. The last four minutes before the okay. off. Yeah, this automated sequence, uh, what happens is See? Uh, Auto any, any reds that come up in the automated sequence, that top red line, if that comes What's up, the payload? we're going to be in the Gravity same satellite. Yeah, exactly. The automated sequence worker perfectly. Lares 2. When making all the checks uh, of all the parameters, detected this out of tolerance and was able to trigger out <laughs> yeah, the, the stop of the countdown and the issue was rapidly solved and so we are back. Yeah, I mean, it's actually amazing, isn't it, that, that an issue can be solved the where, when the rocket's standing there on the he launch. Cooks all the food. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to not make that joke. Sorry, guys. Again. Sorry. We talked about that mobile gantry and how important it is for Vega. Uh, we are going to be heading into this last. <laughs> form, yeah, this, this, this thing is, is going to go uh, very quickly. sequence. I will let Dante explain that What's again. The capacity for Vega C. I don't know off the top of, of my head. Uh, the rocket launch. We're heading down. I reckon we're going to see uh, Frederic there uh, announce that Here very we go. shortly. So stop. I'm going to stop bothering on until he does. Yeah. See if he does. Stop bothering on. Stop bother. But he'll right back. A tous de DDO, attention pour la séquence filin lanceur. Top. Al zero moins quatre minutes. Okay, stand by for the final count, resuming at four minutes. The flight director just announced back that we started the automated sequence, and then we are now in the last four minutes of the uh, chronology up to liftoff. 2300 kilos, that sounds about right, bro. The very last step. What was the timer? It sounded like an egg timer going off. There we go, counters resume. T minus three minutes, 50 seconds. Just before we go. Of the first stage. And uh, this automated sequence covers all the operations that have to be executed in the last part of the countdown. And we have the objective to preserve the launcher capacity, the safety of people and premises, uh, the availability of all the launcher redundancies. Next uh, done, breakfast time. Roof! By a remote ground control bench Two years, now. 200 more to the go. Main steps huh? are the check of the correct <laughs> Thank status you. of the avionics and the fluidic systems. The power commutation. I don't know if I got 200 more years of stream of in me, dude. Barriers. But we'll try. And we even do a nozzle actuation test. 
and being the nodes of the bottom conical part of the stage that has the function to provide guidance capability to the system. Quitter! <laughs> and uh, while we are uh, going through this uh, last You'll make sequence, it. Oh, oh. a very uh, okay. special moment will be represented <laughs> by the time we will be Please. in five, five seconds, uh, just before five seconds the lift off, in which we will have the so-called end hover. So the uh, management of all the operations will pass from this remote control bench to the onboard computer, the brain of the rocket that will take the lead from that moment on up to the release of the payloads. You just yeah, say so it's going to internal power, man. Computer chip. Uh, Dante, just before we're going to this last minute of the countdown, uh, what should we expect? I mean, we've got this uh, beautiful rocket sitting there. 200 months still, I can do. But what Years? Gonna, what, give us a spoiler of the things that excite you at this launch. What I can say is that 10 years ago... Oh, uh, here, yes! The On boards, baby! ...of the Vega. Uh, in uh, 2012, and what made me oh, when yes. seeing it uh, mm -hmm. from the terrace, from uh, the terrace here, was how fast it was. And Vega C uh, is expected to be exactly the same, so we expect to have this very fast rocket jumping off the pad like Usain Bolt and go up to the sky in seconds. Yeah, so do not blink, don't blink, don't make a cup of tea. We're coming up to that final minute. If you've just joined, you are watching the inaugural launch of Europe's versatile new Make rocket, a cup the of Vega C, waiting patiently to jump off the launch pad like a Jaguar into this Angry very American noises. South American sky. Uh, right, we are going to stop bothering on now to give you some chance to soak in that last minute before the launch. So sit back and enjoy. Unfortunately, we have a red condition again. I can see it. Ah, oh, so no. Until we hear some more information from the what's, flight deck. What's Savag Savagard? Dante, what is that? What do we see on, the, that, uh, on the screen? There's two, the three base. Ways. Yes, uh, we have to wait for a tous de DDO, arrêt du décompte suite à un rouge sauvegarde. Que tous les moyens restent prêts pour la reprise de la chronologie à H0-4 minutes en cas de retour au vert. Reset the count to four minutes. Flight director just mm. announced that the rouge in this case was triggered by the uh, sauvegard, so the safety, safety. Okay, uh, saving systems. Means. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So uh, now we are, we are going to, we are going to suspend our commentary and we wait for uh, flight updates and the uh, new launch time to be announced. <laughs> okay. Yep. So we're back to a suspension of commentary. We'll uh, inform you of that new flight time as soon as possible. Oh, man. Come up, on, come up on the screen. So stay tuned to the feed. Goodbye for now. Bye. Discovery, go at throttle up. Having fun? No. No, I feel happy. You guys, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm getting out of the groggy phase of sleeping. Uh, I might go, I might go make some coffee. It's going to be a 6 p.m. space news, isn't it? Ugh. Ugh. They're not cowboys, they actually want a successful launch. How many launches has Europe done this year? Would you like sugar or milk with that tea? Ugh, tea. Bro, why would you put plant in a uh, plant in hot water, okay? All right, we put beans in hot water, okay? Beans. Differences. What time is it here, Hoodies? Uh, it's 8.13 in the morning. How much of a delay can there be before the launch window closes? Microwave, they never gave us any info on the launch window, so... Beans are plants. All right, don't stick up for them. What's wrong with you? What was the biggest mission last year? I forgot something about a telescope. Now yeah, we let you launch that. How many? What? I have a baguette to get. 
Leaves. Not freaking plants. Yeah. Whatever. You would have more launches with one web, but... Here's some music for the internal loop. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. How are we looking for a launch? Laser man, they went to launch. They went to try again, and it didn't work. Black tea is okay, but green? Ugh. Uh, they had... Here, let me, let me go back. They had... So the safeguard and the backup, backup systems, and then the launch sequencer. There's more red this time from this attempt than there was the first time. For Jeff Faust, the window is open for another hour. Okay. I think we need some salami lit. Oh. All right. I'm getting coffee. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting coffee. I'll be right back. I need coffee. Ugh. Back. Why? Why are you like this? New T zero guys. The salami lead. T zero ain't gonna fit. Guess what? I have <clears throat> I have a meat stick. The door lines with the assembly building. Oh. <laughs> Oh, hi, it's me, Mr. T Zero.
this will make you feel better. I don't know, JFK. The window should go for a little bit longer. Thought I heard them cue the microphone. Nope. Dragon, you just crashed Chrome looking at a full res web photo. Nice. Launch this rocket already. I mean, it'd be nice. So, here in in the meantime, here, take a look at this. Doesn't seem to be in too bad condition right there. Yeah, they need the hydraulics so they can get the booster off, Thomas. Because the reply to this is, was just up in the booster propulsion section. Damage appears to be minor, but we need to inspect all the engines. Best to do that in the high bay. Yep, that's pretty much in line with what I was thinking yesterday, dude. With a pop like that, the engines are probably fine, but probably fine doesn't get you very far in this business. If this thing was probably fine, they would have launched it and it probably would have failed. Install of that is coming up now. Visible on Starbase Live. Tim didn't reply on the same tweet. Probably fine, usually. Yeah, that doesn't work with rocket science. That doesn't work very well. You gotta be sure. Time to have filtered bean water, not filtered leaf water. God damn leaves. You don't know the amount of internal damage from the pressure wave. I exactly, yeah. Inspect it. It's not gonna take long. Gotta cool it. Gotta cool my filtered bean water. Look at it. Look at how dark it is. 
It's like motor oil up in there. And in the meantime, test S24. Yep. Parallel testing, dude. I just burnt my tongue. Pressure wave, what happened? Q, they went to do a uh, engine start test yesterday and... Uh, when they started up the engines, they started them with live propellants, so liquid oxygen and liquid methane. And they start they they didn't they didn't have the pre burner igniters on or the main combustion chamber igniters on for the Raptor engines. So what they did was they ended up spewing a, a bunch of atomized fuel and oxidizer out the bottom onto the pad, and that found an ignition source and exploded because the atomized liquid oxygen and liquid methane is very, very flammable. Uh, that's literally what makes that what they blow up inside of the rocket engine. It's really easy to make it explode once it's atomized. Also, they could switch to 8 if needed. They probably could use most of the Raptors, Raptor 2s from 7. Yeah, if they if you really wanted to do that, Boxy, I think they should just finish 8. If Just finish 8, launch it first, and then launch 7 later. That doesn't sound like a smart idea. Uh... Yeah, considering whether guy that when you have an atomized if when you have atomized fully cryogenic propellants like that, if they hit anything, like if they hit a heat source, it's going to blow up. It's going to, like it, it'll auto combust. Yeah, there you go, Ono, right? Probably fine, usually doesn't work work too well. That's the same rocket from yesterday. That's that's correct, Q. Yep, yep. Were they using a water suppression system at the time of the boom? Uh, I'm not sure. Test as you test as you fly. That's right, Rocket. You got it, man. It depends on the damage, Bach. That's the real. That's the real thing. Yeah, I don't think the water system was active. It doesn't look like it was. But anyway, uh, that's what's going on in South Texas. We're, we're not here to cover South Texas right now. Oh, yep, they scrubbed. Oh, nope, they didn't scrub. Nope, hello? Hi? Nope, nope, not, not a replay. Nope. Nope. Try again. Nope. One more time. One more time. Well, one more. All right, we got a backup. Vega launch has been delayed to 12. That's the slide that they wanted. 37. So, 10 minutes from now. It said the it said that they'll resume coverage in about 10 minutes. Give them a break. All the labels are in French. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're, uh, yeah, someone's having some fun with the stream deck. Just, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh. 
You think the ESA has the budget for a stream deck? <laughs> no. Maybe. This one? Nope. This one? Nope. You gotta catch the bus. I'll try and follow from the phone. Okay. Au revoir. This is a live picture, yeah. See the bird? Burb. They canceled the stream deck program. <laughs> Grab shark. <laughs> Oh, savage. They have one button on the stream deck. Next. Yeah, yeah. Hey, WD, what's up? With the bird emote. Burp. 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 Ah. It's too early. I won't play that. Actually, speaking of burbs, hold on. WD, look at this. Burbs. Yeah, yeah, MP, sure. Yeah. It's called an automaton. EJ, you're on my new laptop now. It's wild when eagles do that. Yeah, that's, uh, well, that's Discord over there. This is uh, Mark Smith Photography. Check that out. Isn't that cool? Chris Chris posted that on uh, on the Twitterers the other day. Burbs. Those drones look angry. So this is what drone attacks mean. <sighs> yeah. Did you see that? That's uh, that's pretty neat. So this thing is an automaton. It's, if you were wondering, MP, it, uh, <laughs> think guitar almost, but it's like a synthesizer guitar. It's from Japan. That should explain a lot. You're right, it's too early for that. All of those Discord alerts, you don't, dude. You don't want to know. Oh, oh no! Yeah, see, I have a little one. I have a little one, and I have a big one. They're... Yeah, they're... they're yeah. Automatones. An American who knows the French anthem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's from Japan. I could sit here and explain how it, how it works, or I could just say it's from Japan, and people would be like, oh, oh okay. Yeah, all right. Don't do that. I panic switched from work to this town. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Leroy, right? That's pretty neat. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. <laughs> they have mop socks for cats, so yeah, it's from Japan. Yep. A 
Have you ever, ever wondered where the word rocket comes from? Nope. Well, you bet it comes from Japan as well. Rockets? No, rockets are a Chinese invention. Believe it or not, solid rocket boosters. Yeah. Chinese were using SRBs like 2,000 years ago or something. I forget the exact date. It's too early. But uh, yeah, if you really want to know. And then an American invented the first liquid fuel rocket engine. Actually, that Goddard is from my neck of the woods. Fireworks, indeed. And they, well, they weren't just using them for fireworks. They were using them as siege weaponry as well. Black powder, that's right. Yep. And then the Germans actually made it useful. Well, an amateur rocketry club in the 30s from Germany, yeah, took Goddard's work and tried to tried to make tried to actually put it put it on a launch vehicle. And then some mustache guy got a hold of that and yeah. Yeah. They, spaceophobic, they used it as propellant for arrows. No, the Chinese had siege weaponry. Like, I'm talking like a wagon with a rocket launcher on it. Impulsive goose. Oh, no. Some officials are like, meat. You damn Austrians. And then, like, a little bit later, that mustache guy was like, No, Truman, no, that is so not right. No, this is so not right. Don't do the... And then, yeah, no. And then that rocket technology found its way to the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Yeah, that's how that happened. Sure. Yep. Impulsive Goose. I've started investing in stocks. First chicken, then beef, now vegetable. Despite the potential risks, I believe one day I'll be a bullionaire. Uh. Oh God, Laglander, no, no. It's, it's, it's. Damn it, Keeson. Damn it, man, it's too early for that. Stop. I need more coffee. <laughs> Alex, take me, God, please. <laughs> Dude, you almost made me—you almost made me spit my drink out. Oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> take me, please. <laughs> I heard the dejection in your voice, dude. What time is Le Lancement? They said that they'd resume coverage, Jim, in about five minutes, and they were aiming for a launch at quarter till. Discovery, go at throttle up. But this early stuff is killing me, man. Hey, all systems, reach out to the rocket and light it. Uh, Discovery, go at throttle up. Uh, okay, just, just, you just poke it. What is Vega Transfer? It's moving a gravitational experiment satellite. You guys ever launched a gravioli detector in KSP? Literally that. It's the space disco ball. Phoenix had an 18 or in all systems with a 57. Reach out to the rocket. Yeah. Thanks, dudes. I appreciate it. Here, look at the Laris 2 satellite. It's actually really cool looking. It's the space disco ball. I'm not kidding. There it is. Space disco ball! I got you, Whiff. 
Come on, do something. Yeah, Space Disco Ball. It does have a 1950s vibe to it. So, <clears throat> Lares is the laser relativity satellite. This is the Lares 2 satellite, believe it or not. Uh, Lares 2 is a little bit different. It's a little bit cooler looking. See? Space Disco Ball. There it is with the uh, with the Vegas Seas fairing. See it over there? Little disco ball. It's going to a 6,000 kilometer circular orbit. And what this thing is really designed to do, <clears throat> it's uh, designed to measure the lens steering effect, which, which relativity, it's gravity. It's a, gra it's, a, it's a gravioli indicator. It's, it's measuring gravitational pull, amongst other things. Space Epcot ball. Yep, yep. It contains char sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their freaking heads. Ravioli being such an important part of the universe just proves the flying spaghetti monster is real. I agree. I agree. I don't agree. Yep. Don't we know gravity exists already? Well, we're going to know it exists harder. Try winner. Jeez. Of course, Jay. Gravity indicator, I have one of those. It's called the scale. <laughs> yeah, but how do you make that how do you make that work in space? A new T zero of thirteen oh seven. Okay. What orbit is this going into? Medium Earth orbit, Jim, 6,000 kilometer. Uh, 6,000 kilometer circular drama. at about 45 degrees inclined from what I could tell from the track. It's, uh, it's science. We need more proof that gravity exists. That's 83% that's more proof per proof. Repeating, of course. 83.33. Repeating, of course. Oh my gosh. It did, they just launched. Oh gosh. Yeah, stick to the plan, chums. Is it 70 degrees inclined, Thomas? It looked like... I believe you. I believe you. It's, <clears throat> we'll go 70, Jim. Ciao, Adam. Come stai? Il Lancio de Vega è stato posticipato. Eh? They said it was 70? Yeah, okay. I believe you guys. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was guessing by looking at the ground track uh, that they had on the... Uh, on the monitors. I can't say posticipato. I can't say the damn thing. <laughs> Almost. Hey, I was close. I was close. I'm getting better. Not really. <laughs> Hope we're having a good week. Absolutely huge crit. Yeah. Stick to the plan, chums. Stick to the plan. Adam, how you doing, man? To be fair, you're not 100%. I just hope you get better soon. Thanks, Roro. I got my first officer upgrade. Finally. Took three years, bro. That's awesome, dude. Congratulations. Hell yeah. I mean, with the birds you're flying around, that's pretty damn impressive, dude, if I do say so myself. I'm so disappointed that was a staged video. I, I You know what? I choose, It's 2022, Blue. You can choose to believe whatever you want. I choose to believe that that wasn't staged. Okay? All right, it's 2022, man. I can think whatever I want, and people cannot judge me for it. They will, they just won't tell me. But it's 2022, you can do whatever you want. That that it's real, it's real. Stick to the plan, chums. <laughs> See what coffee does. <laughs> I guess learning Russian is on hold. Who he's? Yeah, I kind of kind of stopped doing that. <laughs> kind of stopped doing that. I still can read it from time to time, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, I can't read it very well. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna need a tissue after shuttle was useless, can't change your mind. Mailed. I'm gonna, I, I need a tissue after that. I'm not, you don't want to, yeah. Okay, I'll be back in a moment. I'll be back in a moment. Just.
Just chill. Duh. Not even kidding, had to change my shirt. Not even kidding. It's wise to study the ways of one's adversary, don't you think? It is. <clears throat> All I want to say now is... Basi, are you okay? Is the video paused? Hit play. I can't, I can't hit play anymore. That's not an asshole shirt, how dare you? I had to put on yesterday's shirt, dude. You ever played Scum? Nah. Well, you should? Oh, okay. I can't, I can't, I can't hit play anymore. I can't pull over anymore. <laughs> Right. So in about 15 minutes, we should get a, a, a an update here in a moment. Hey, who are you calling scum? Now to sit here and teach you boys a lesson, Officer Chad and I are going to sit here and watch you guys play the whole video. <laughs> Please, no! <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, me too. Huge crit. It's a good one. Ah, oh, boy. <laughs> I'm on a, a cops! <laughs> the crap! How come nobody called me? I hear some boogies are on the rise. Yeah, no, no. No, no. The, the, uh, um, I will explain, because this is a STEM stream, we will explain it scientifically. Um... We had a little bit of a blowout here in this area, and uh, the boogies were e evac'd out of the local propellant feed system. Atomized snot. We were doing a starter test, spin prime on the snaz blowout with with missing ignition task failed successfully yes 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 mm -hmm. never mix your intake and exhaust well the problem weather guy is that we have a system that where the intake pipe is also the exhaust pipe what the hell's up with that who thought who thought that was a good idea jeez o2 exhaust valves are nasal spin start test completed was the blowout has the same magnitude of the B7 explosion? Well, I did, we didn't achieve combustion, Zizep. If we had combustion, I would not be here. James Webb is set to release images of our solar system tomorrow. Oh, yeah. We got those images of Jupiter, Alex. And I'll be honest, like, guys, straight up with James Webb. Yeah, I, I figure being honest is better. I like dealing with rockets. This is my favorite part. Astronomy is usually not my digs. With that being said, I have to say that James the James Webb pictures are phenomenal. Uh, just just unbelievable, dude. And I'm actually <clears throat> I'm actually getting in a little bit on that hype train. It, they're re it, the, the images are impressive. I want to see that picture of Jupiter. It's going to look amazing. <clears throat> like it's going to look amazing. Yeah, 
element. Yeah, they left me speeches. I was sitting here swooning over those, <clears throat> like the four pictures that they released yesterday. And I'm just like, I, the clarity is unbelievable. It's un, it's dude, what an amazing piece of technology. We need more. It, like, <clears throat> EJ Brain defaulted to we need more. Europeans, you want to launch more? We need more. We need, I don't know what we're gonna do with a second one. It doesn't matter. We need more of these. We need more of that. Can we get? Can we get more of that? <clears throat> we need more of them. Get another one. Let's do more. We should do. We should. We should build another one. It, it doesn't even need to be an upgrade. It just. It just make another one. Just make another one and send it up there. I don't care what it does. We need more pictures. More science, please. Livor is its name, Blue. Yeah. No, no. This one won't cost ten billion. It'll be fine. It'll be okay. I say six or seven. Well, in a two body, in a two celestial body system, you, there's only so many Lagrangian points that you can put it at hypersonic. So we're gonna need, we're gonna do, we we got five. So six would be too much, unless we want to land one on the moon and use it as. A, Too much dust? Just get a fan, Adam. Jeez. <laughs> it was a, that was a joke, please. Can we just fund all the next great observatory missions? Yeah, we need... Livor is the one we need. Send HEPA filters. It'll be fine. Just put a squeegee on it. Yes. Okay, okay, guys. All right, all right, guys. New plan. New plan. We take a nuclear reactor. We put it on the far side of the moon. It generates electricity. How, how, how that would work? I don't know, man. Do I look like a scientist to you? And then we land a James Webb right next to it, and then we power James Webb, another James Webb-style satellite with the nuke, and then we make a, we make a city on the far side of the moon. For radio, obs for radio telescope observations. I'm a genius. Yeah, we should do that. <clears throat> I finished reading How Apollo Flew to the Moon by David Woods. Man, what an amazing read. It's pretty impressive, Adam, isn't it? Uh, what book did I get? I bought this one yesterday. Here, I'll show you what I'm reading. What I started. Well, I haven't started reading it yet, but uh, we'll get it. Burbs. This is what I'm going to burn through. Get it? Burn through. Modern engineering for design of liquid rocket propellant engines. Rocket guy, I bought it, dude. This book is this book is freaking choice, man. I love it. It's like RPE. Like here, let me just This is this is so freaking cool, man. This book is awesome. It'll tell you everything you need to know about how rocket engines are made. It's really, really freaking cool. Look. Ugh. I don't know if I should show this. This might be not safe for work. Turbo pumps. Turbo pumps! Oh ho 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 ho! Ooh la la! Ooh, ooh la la! <laughs> Is that a centerfold? No! <laughs> and here we see the rocket's reproductive systems. <laughs> Is that the new Play Nerd magazine? Yes. <laughs> Where did you buy that from? I got it off of Amazon. Yeah. That would mean getting sunlight on the mirrors, though. Yeah, we'd have to we'd have to design it a little bit different. How you held that book? It looks like you were reading Penthouse, man. You gotta, Adam. You gotta fold it down though. We don't have a we don't have a 
fold down though. But oh, this is freaking cool, man! This book is sick. I'm so happy I bought this. There's, it's got all the equations in it too. We're gonna learn a new thing today. It's called math, and without it, none of us would exist. Is that Miss January? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's an awesome book. I, I really, that's that's what I'm burning through, Adam. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm burning through. Hoonigan are using a 3D printed ink canal intake manifold on the Huna Pegasus. That thing is amazing. Oh, here we go. 1307, 1313. Okay, 20 minutes. Link to the book. Uh, uh, please hold. Modern engineering for design of liquid propellant rocket engines. There you go. Yeah, it's a, it's a college textbook. But it's July 13th at 1313 UTC. Oh god. Oh oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> July 13th 1313 13, UTC. Yeah. <laughs> dude, 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 who picked this time? What the frick? Who thought that was a good idea? What are you doing? Stop it! <laughs> anyway, Adam, can you link up the book you're reading? I, I want to see if I've read it or not. I think I have, but it's been a while. 13, 13, 17? 17? 17? Why couldn't it be 13, 13, 13? Oh, that's just ridiculous. What's the payload for this? Uh, port, we have the Lares 2. Gravitational imaging satellite. It's a disco ball. It's a big disco ball. Light. Oh, get over yeah. here. You think I'm kidding? It's a big disco ball. Last attempt of the day. Lara's 2 is a satellite for measure, measuring relativity. Yeah, Me relativity. It, it, it's a gravioli detector. If anybody's ever played KSP, literally a gravioli detector. More like golf ball. But, yeah, I mean, golf is good. I like golf, but but also, well, I don't like disco. So yeah, you know what, Sebby, we'll call it a golf ball. That's fine. In Italian, a soccer ball. Si, si. Il Lancio de Vega è stato posticipato. Uh, damn it, I don't know how to say 13. Is this disco ball going to get space to boogie? Oh, yeah. Added that book to the resources page on your site. Merci, Dormeur. Discovery, go at throttle up. Miles, 42 month resub. Thank you. Speaking of the Italian soccer, their women's team lost 5 to 1 to France. Ugh. Oh. de DDO. Suite à retour ouvert des différents euh, moyens, le nouveau H0 visé est à 13h13 13 minutes 17 secondes TU. Okay. Le temps des comptes redémarrera à 13h09 minutes 17 secondes. Ok. Yep, yeah, he said that. <laughs> Look what they have to do so Centaur doesn't crush itself. Wow. 
They have to hang the they have to hang the damn centaur, Phil. Guys, look at this. So centaur, this is a museum in uh, Colorado. The wings over the Rockies. Look at this. They have a centaur on display with an RL10, and they have to. You gotta hang it from a. You gotta hang it from a lattice from stage rigging. Look at this, because it it, it won't stand up by itself. It'll crumple over. It's too. It's too. It's not structural for for Earth. It it will not stand up by itself. So they hang it from a giant post. From this looks like stage rigging there. Also, there's an F-14 behind it. Yeah, Thomas. See, <laughs> Thomas, I liked you for a. Re I know I liked you for a reason. There's an A6 over there. Could be an EA6. Oh, look at that thing. I wonder how they, how did they get a centaur stage? How did that even happen? Beautiful plane. Yeah, F-14s. You can't lose with F-14s. How does it support itself during launch? Fuel? That's correct, Creo. Yep. Pressurizing liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen inside of it. That's what they use. They they use that for structure. Yep. That's the only way. Think about it like a like soda can. Same thing. Same idea. This thing, when it's not pressurized, so it's open. Not very structural. But when it's fully pressurized, you could step on this thing and it won't break. Not, not, not stomp on it. You could, you could put a lot of weight on it. Centaur is built exactly like this, but it's built with stainless steel. You want to hear something crazy? You know, you see how thin the aluminum is on this, right? That's about how thin Centaur's tank wall is. It's about the same. Yep. Pretty crazy, right? Like on the rocket, like on, on the actual rocket. It's about the same thickness as this. Maybe a little bit thicker, just a tiny bit, <clears throat> but not as much as you might think. You could literally punch a hole through, if you have like a screwdriver, you could punch a hole through a Centaur, no problem. The tank walls are not, they are not thick. No, no, Miles, they're actually that thin. Yeah, no, I'm not, that's not, that's not, this really isn't that much of an exaggeration. I don't think it's as, as thin as the soda can, but it, it's close. Um, yeah, dude, they, they... To make the centaur stage, to make the dome on the centaur, ta centaur stage, they take stainless steel and they treat it like cellophane wrap. You, you know, like if you have leftovers, right? And you put you put the plastic wrap on the top and you stretch it over the top to get it to cover the thing. They literally do that with stainless steel. It is the gnarliest thing ever. It's really cool. It's 0.51 millimeters, 20 thousandths of an inch. So yeah, that, that's actually not far off. 0.51, so a half a mil. That's that is about the same as a soda can. It's unbelievable. They're called balloon tanks. On on Centaur, that's why Centaur has to have that that rigging to hold it upright because it can't stand up by itself. It'll tumble. It'll tumble over. EJ's first welding challenge is to weld two aluminum soda cans together. I'd need a TIG welder to do it, Nick. Yeah, about the thickness of a dime, Blue. It's yeah, it's a little bit a little bit thinner than a dime. Unbelievable. Where's Starship thickness? 0.7? Starship is four mil. Four millimeter. Sebi, so it it's uh um So, 160 thousandths of an inch, which is nothing. That is nothing for a tank wall. That's really, really small. So, Savvy Starship is 4 mil, and Starship can stand up by itself. That's the difference. Centaur is way thinner than Starship, but Starship can't use balloon tanks. Wow, it doesn't feel like that leaves much room for error. Well, Simon, with rockets, here's the thing, okay? With rockets... Okay, there's a formula for calculating how far a rocket can go in space, a rocket's range. It's called the ideal rocket equation, okay? Uh, it, it's, 
it's called delta v rockets rockets range is not measured in distance it's measured in acceleration because the name of the game is speed if you can accelerate faster you can go further in space because you're accelerating out of grav wells right so that ideal rocket equation is uh is here i have it up on the screen i can i can show it it's right there see it up there delta v equals gravity times specific impulse logarithmic m1 over m0 right it's up there so what that basically means if that looked like gibberish to you don't worry it, it's rocket science of course it's gibberish everything looks ridiculous until you actually try and sit there and figure out what the heck it means right that is the basis of the basis the basics of the basics of rocket science what that formula gets you is how far it goes now there's a really good plain english way to say it the plain english way to say it is the the more fuel you have on your rocket and the less rocket that you have on your rocket the further it goes that's what that's what the delta v formula basically basically says that's the plain english way of saying it so you're absolutely right it does not leave much margin for error a centaur upper stage on Atlas V and the one that's going to fly on Vulcan is like 98% fuel and like 2% rocket. The ratio of rocket to fuel is called your mass fraction. And 98% mass fraction is about as good as you can get. It does not get better than that. No, not even for like Starship. Starship does not have that type of mass fraction. Now the reason why, part of the reason why is because Starship is reusable. Centaur is not. Centaur is one and done, right? Starship needs to be used a bunch of times, so the mass fraction is a little different because it has wings and all this other and tiles and all this other stuff. There's more rocket on the rocket, so the rocket can't go as far. Mo mass, mo problems. That's right. Yeah, the, the, there's. <laughs> you got to make sure that you pressurize it right. Anyway, so we're back. Here we go. If you've just joined us, you are watching the inaugural launch of Europe's versatile new rocket Vega C. <laughs> And she really is waiting patiently to get the <coughs> launch pad into the cloudy South American sky here. Um, so we've had a couple of stops when we got down to the uh, oh, synchronized cool. sequence. Uh, but, uh, you know, these things happen. It builds up some sort of terrific tension here. There's lots of people milling about. Everyone's slightly more excited, slightly more under pressure. Uh, the, we're here we are in the Jupiter control room and uh, we have about 1 minute 30 seconds until we get down to that uh, 4 minute uh, countdown um, so uh, <laughs> we've been here twice already uh, but it does queue up very very nicely a 1313 UTC launch time on the 13th of July are you a suspicious man, Dante? <laughs> I don't think so, hypersonic. <laughs> no, I'm Italian, yes. And uh, we had, uh, indeed, parameter of such regular tolerance. It has been corrected. Yeah, Cammy, this uh, is the last the attempt for the day. Both launcher and ground site are uh, again the ready deal. for this new synchronized sequence. And for information Start a prediction? The last I think it'll work if it launches unbiased, and, uh, but... Let's wait. Now. Guys, this is the first launch of Vega C. This is the first configuration for Vega C. Vega C is a new rocket. Um, so they're not going to send it unless they're absolutely sure. So if there's any red or anything, don't even try. Just wait till tomorrow. Figure out what's wrong and wait till tomorrow. Don't be impatient. So because this is a new rocket configuration, if something does go wrong, they'll just launch it tomorrow. So he's sitting there patiently looking at his screen. Uh, tous de DDO. Pour la final load, sir. Attention, stand by for the final it. count of the launch vehicle. I'm going to say top, and we will start that synchronized se top. sequence. Top. minutes. Top. H0 minus 4 minutes. All right, T minus 4 minutes. Here <laughs> so we go. It's a little bit through the synchronized sequence, uh, like you have done before, Dante. Yes, the synchronized sequence is doing uh, and did. Okay. They're running Vega C. Exe. It's it's not it's not Windows. They don't d most rockets use Linux if you really want to know. <laughs> they don't use Windows. You don't need an update mid-launch. You know what I'm saying? Am I right or am I right? Before it's lift off, in an automated way, that means that whenever something that is out of tolerance is detected, there is an automatic triggering 
Could you imagine? That would suck, Kane. What do you reckon the TWR is, Sile? 1.4, 1.3? Maybe 1.5 off the pad? This is a very light payload with a very powerful rocket, man. This thing is gonna go. If it goes, it's gonna go, and it's gonna go fast. Like, missile fast. That first stage, that new first stage is no joke, dude. It's no joke. P120C, it's a very big solid rocket motor. In less than three minutes now. Yeah, everything is still green, <laughs> so that's nice. looking good. Um, yep, still green. Uh, Dante, you told me earlier on that that white little bit at the top of the mast was uh, an addition because Vegas is... What are they launching? Some stationary yeah, satellites? Great, great Slow... Rocket here. Uh, so Dante There's a bunch of small payloads on this. This is a rideshare mission, but the primary payload is the Laris 2 satellite. It's a giant disco ball. No, it, it's designed for literally measuring gravity. Yeah, it's it's something that it's something that's designed to uh, con help confirm relativity. Yeah, measuring gravitational fields and stuff. Big disco ball. How does it work? Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's beyond me. Big, uh, just big disco ball. That's that's all. That that's all. That's all I'm saying. As I was saying before, you should pay attention on how fast this rocket is. When just had my son's birthday bad. last week and we launched yeah, a few small rockets. It was fun. I haven't done them since I was a kid. <laughs> Gotta get the next generation well, in for the goodies. That's why I'm here. That's People why I'm here. Well, hello there. We still have General EJ. Burb. Wow. That bird needs to get the minutes. frick away so, uh, or it's really gonna I have a bad, stop. bad I day. I want you to really soak this final minute in. Dante okay, <laughs> here we go. This is about the point where it aborted uh, the last two attempts, right around here. The very first moments of launch to guide you through the next hour and a half until the mission comes Okay. Through. But trust me, there is plenty of excitement in this launch, and the one flight minute. director will mark that uh, Almost. one minute coming up very, very shortly. So enjoy. Sit back. A tous de DDO, attention pour moins une minute. This is the mission director. Stand by for one minute. H zero minus one minute. T minus one minute. Okay, the inaugural launch of Vega C with the Laris two primary payload. Forty-five seconds out right now. All right, this is what we've been waiting for. That bird is in for a really bad day, <laughs> man. That's a really bad day. It's gonna get real loud right there. C'est parti. We. Oui. There's a lot of oh the birds no <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh god no not the birds oh my god they're everywhere they're all over the place. A tous de DDO attention pour le décompte final. Stand by for the final count. Ten, Six, nine, nine eight, 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 seven, six, six five, seven, four, four, three. three. Two, one, ignition. Go, baby, go! Oh, man, that's quick! Dude, look at how fast that's going! She's a beast! Come on! Dude, you just, I told you it was gonna go fast! Come on! Give me the onboard! Come on, onboard cameras, let's go! Beach shot is good too, I guess. And it's gone! She's a monster! Guys, Ariane 6 is gonna have four of those first stages attached to it. Like I said, no joke. Okay, so that's obviously a render. This is live telemetry, though. Fellas, what we need to look for, and fellas, yeah, we need to look for the X inside of the circle. As long as that X stays inside the circle, that means the track is good. From the Jupiter Control Center yes. now, but Parameter that, abort, normal. we've got a beautiful quasi synchronized animation for the quasi launch. It's uh, not telemetry, uh, telemetry synced, so although we see things, this is the real telemetry up here, that's just an animation. That the event is 
That is a man. Trajectoire nominal. There we go. Everything's normal. Trajectory is nominal. Full of information, Dante. Can you give us a little bit of information about all those different parameters? We can see here the ground track, so the projection of the trajectory on the ground. Then the halo. Oh. oh. The distance from the launcher. Very nice. Time passed since the liftoff. Almost one minute forty seconds. Yeah, and we've seen some beautiful external camera shots there. Uh, they are okay, she's going right down the track from what I can see here. For technical reasons. Mission director um, reports all normal parameters. Normal. We are currently flying under the propulsion of the P Okay, the next step in the flight here Europe is the P120C separation here. Avio, we're already coming up to a major double milestone in a few seconds. P120. And Dante, will... <laughs> Dante will explain what that double milestone is. It's a unique complex separation of the spent it's, it's, it's in the track, Spaghetti. As long as the X stays inside of the circle, we're good. P120C is slowing his thrust and we are approaching... Okay, tail off on the P120C. Come on. The animation. Separation P120. There it goes. Okay. Allumage Z40. And it's ignited. Good. Yeah, this is a we got a good separation of the P120C and good ignition to the second stage. Rest shock, 33 month resub, and Sparrow with a 42. What does it mean? That can be considered qualified for future Vegasi missions and flight proven to be used as strap on boosters. Vehicle velocity is 2.3 kilometers a second. Yeah, so you may have noticed in that 3D animation. Downrange distance, 150, 160 kilometers at a 100 kilometer altitude. We have this She's booking. They provide trust to the P1 Propulsion is nominal from the mission director. With so much it's in the track, Ryan. It, it's fine. That's okay. The rest of the it's in the track. It's We're good. So Three kilometers a second. Announced, the flight director announced that the Z40 ignition second stage, which has a 90 second, 92 second of burn time, uh, and we're doing this dog leg maneuver as it's well. It's some now. type so of insulation. Stage. It's also like Mike on. Either it's that or it's so cream puffs. Solid rocket motor taught me through the Z4. This is that's actual that's data, that's Simon, up here. That's, that's the real telemetry. And that is a real onboard shot. Kilometers per hour speed and more than 180 kilometers of altitude. Trajectory is nominal from the mission director. The hurt is not flat. <laughs> we can see it. Well it wasn't flat forty Clearly. seconds ago. <laughs> we can't confirm it is flat now. Yeah. This really nice view from the pilotage <laughs> guiding you can hear the French director saying pilotage what the hell? that means in French that the guiding is so far is very smooth. Okay. Alright, stand by for Z40 tail off and, and parameters okay. and and everything is good. Also the separation of the second stage that you don't want to know drummer. is first in flight. Okay. So Going to have a, a couple of sequence of events that's going to happen real quick here. We have the Z40 flame out and separation, and then fairing separation, and then ignition of the third stage. Separ see, separation, quaff, right there. That's the fairing. Okay, Z40. Okay, separation is good. We have ignition of the third stage. Se stand by for fairing. Yes, and it is firing. And Good fairing separation. Separation la coiffe. And uh, DDO confirms Good. it actually Mission happens. director. It's separating of the fairing. Good well. separation of the fairing. It's when you watch it for the first time, you Perfect. Think, well, you know, you're hey, Shinar, what's up, man? Payload to the uh, rushing wind. Dude, Shinar, go, go back on this and watch this wind thing wind go. Well She's fast, man. Vegas C is a beast. So Dante, tell it's a monster. Look, we are ready at 194. Okay, the next, the next step in the flight here, fellas, next step here is the uh, Z9 separation. So Z9 is the third stage. I think that's a, I think that's a nine. I can't really. Okay, trajectory is good. All parameters look good. That's right from the launch director. The lighter you are, the more performance you get, and the better. Five point seven kilometers a second. Velocity here. We're about two thirds of the way to space here. Eight hundred and fifty kilometers downrange. Two hundred and fifteen kilometers in altitude. Seventy seconds behind now, but that's actually quite useful because we get to comment on it. And look, there's the fairing wobbling away. Oh, oh the, this is super delayed. Down to like you say, a, a sort of <laughs> So everything that was normal. super delayed, uh, dude, but we got a shot of fairing uh, separation. I know, Ando, dude, uh, onboard. On the animation, 
Uh, talk us through this particular fight because we're going to see a maneuver any second now that's yes. uh, quite interesting. Yes, it's we gonna... have seen now uh, since um, the, the separations of the first and second stage, they fall back. Into the Why? Trajectory is nine, nominal, right from the mission director. Reach, uh, almost 300 kilometers of altitude, and it will uh, continue in a ballistic uh, trajectory. Okay, velocity is past eight kilometers a second. This thing should be circularized here, and now they're going to point up. Send it. And, uh, this way That's pushing the apogee of the orbit higher. Now the orbit is getting more elliptical. Of this uh, third stage that will happen uh, in the polar sea. Yep. Still everything's fine. It's on the screen. About another 30 seconds here until tail off on the Z9. See, it's absolutely normal following that green track. So we'll always hear from the confirmation from the flight director that things are happening. But uh, okay, we should be getting a thrust tail off on the Z9 now. And everything is still normal. That third stage is almost spent now. It's um, stand by for flame out of Z9. It's no different from the other two stages, is it? No, it's just smaller, but uh, it brings the most uh, difference in terms of uh, 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 gaining speed. Separation Z9. Z9. Z9 has separated. Okay, they got Z9 separation. It will safely fall near the pole, uh, and this is Vegas. Very nice. First time Disco ball. Globe, and unfortunately. Uh, last as well. So uh, let's talk about ground stations, actually, Dante. We'll be yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Extra right, yeah. No, no just point up. One minute, 30 seconds, I believe. Zed and that's going to be from about <laughs> five minutes. So, what exactly does it mean to lose ground stations? Orbit attempt après extension Z9 nominal. Oh, well, let's, so, let's soak yes, in that view I of the blue marble. For, <laughs> I was listening. I didn't the get the that. Ting, what do you say? Still, everything is nominal. So, the rocket is guided autonomously by its own board computer. Oh! oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> A little delayed, but that's really nice. Great separation. Perfect. Is he still not flat? What we have to That's nice. And the need to do is to constantly know where it is the launch and how it is doing. He meant that stage, bro. Yes, to the various announcement from the flight director, and he can do this only because we have this ground station so big and tender. He said orbital insertion nominal after shutting down Z9. Merci to uh, retrieve all the telemetry data coming normal. from the rocket. Everything is good. Uh, we know what is happening uh, and that everything Bienvenue. is nominal. Uh, uh, space? As, uh, the uh, flight director just announced it. And each antenna has a visibility cone. And when we design the mission, we don't only um, maximize and optimize the performance, but we must also ensure that, look, oh, we have... That's the payload. Uh, yes, yes. Oh! The view of the Hello! Uh, disco the, ball! If you think it looks yeah, like a, a, a space disco, disco ball! ball. <laughs> yeah, indeed. It really does. It really does. Wait, and I think we've he just said mirror ball. The, uh, Do you guys call it a mirror stuff. ball? No. No. Exactly. And so I was saying, no. Le we, that we ensure that all the main events. No. Okay. Good. Full we don't. We don't. Okay. Good. Yeah, so we're <laughs> I was like, mirror ball. No. Miss it, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Disco mirror ball. Okay. No, all right. the, uh, right. ISS there. Right. So there was right. confirmation. The rocket's out right. of sight, but right. certainly right. not out of mind. She's bravely flying. All on her own. Uh, what, what happens to all that telemetry, though, when uh, the Rockies is out of the... So, these things right here, those are satellite launchers. They're gonna, they're radial satellite launchers. So, basically, there's a, there's a small shoebox-shaped satellite in here, and then there's a spring behind it. They'll pop open the door and then let the spring go, and it'll shoot it out the side. There's four of them right here. These are radial dispensers right there. And then, these guys right here are the holders for the disco ball. That's the Lares 2 satellite. It is straight up a sphere-shaped satellite. A uh, brilliant rocket. Uh, so, with that, this is an inaugural launch, and uh, what is the follow-up to a success of an, inaugur uh, an inaugural launch? Well, the Vega C is the start of a new era of space launch. European Space Agency working hard for building a system that delivers... Pinball? So, here are you could say familiar faces. You could say that the ESA are a bunch of pinball wizards. You know, ever, ever since I was a young boy, I played the silver ball. No? Alright, cool. Particular the evolutions of the 
of the Vega launcher, I'm so the Vega C version, I must have the played them all, oh, but I ain't Vega seen Evolution nothing like it in any amusement hall. Oh, that deaf, dumb, and blind kid sure plays a mean pinball. Great song, great album. Tommy, man, that guy can play some pinball. It's a great song. Who's a great band? After the disco ball separates, the stage drops its orbits to deploy the six cube sets. There you go. There's the Evum. That's the uh, that's the fourth fourth stage right there. Which will replace. Uh, the current Zephyr 9 and Abum uh, propulsion stages. So the third and fourth <coughs> stage will be replaced by a single third stage liquid oxygen, liquid methane. It's a technology that represents a novelty for you. Oh, wow. So quite a bit of effort for They're going with a cryo third stage. Cool. Okay. All that coupled with Space Rider, which will be the first European operational capability fully reusable. Space Rider. Down to Earth, be refurbished and start again. Space Rider is a little mini space shuttle, guys. No, not kidding. Which really strengthens Europe in space. This is a model of Space Rider. The real thing is look, quite bigger. Look, besides it, look, two it, mini look at it. It's a little mini space shuttle. Space little mini space shuttle. Form experiments in microgravity. This is because the re-entry module has a cargo bay in which we can put experiments. It's a little inside. mini space shuttle. It's so cute. I love it. Of new technologies in this so what do I think of the mock? Microgravity conditions. Yeah, Vegas gonna launch it, dude. Look, it's a little mini shuttle. Put a Kerbal in there, indeed. Space Rider will oh. be launched on top of a Vega C launcher. Oh. We stay two yeah. months in orbit, and after its orbital life, the two modules, the re-entry module and the orbital module, will separate, and the re-entry module will deorbit and re-enter on Earth. This is thanks to two additional systems <laughs> that are a landing gear that will open when we'll be close to the ground. Dude, it's like the Gemini paraglider. And then thanks That's to excellent. I love it. I love it. That That's awesome! At about <laughs> Please do altitude, this! And we guide autonomous. Oh, that's so legit, man. Landing site. Reusability is a key word worldwide in the space sector, and we want to address this challenge in order to demonstrate, thanks to Space Rider, uh, that we will be able to fly over and over, reduce the recurrent cost, and be competitive. Mark, in a very what is the. Purpose of this mission? This is the Vega C Laris 2. Vega C is a brand new rocket. Wow, and it's launching that disco ball into space. The space rider. I want to write a rock song <laughs> called Space Rider. Yeah, Roro, Ro, that Space Rider is sick. Space Rider. This is the first <laughs> ever flight of a Vega C. Visibility. Station Rosegel. European well, showing emotion during a cast is just weird. So we're back, so she's back in the game. What is that thing? It's a little mini space shuttle, Sal. Um, that's so not that's, what was so launched that's, here. That's brilliant news. They the didn't launch that here. They launched the disco ball. What is the disco ball for? It's for measuring yeah, general yeah, relativity. And the ground station is about yep. 20 kilometers south of Toulouse in France. So Toulouse. Ha -ha. There's a picture of the ground station over there on the left. The inaugural there it is. Look. That's a picture of a Matt guy and space with a keyboard. Program manager, no less, Dante Gale. Dante, explain why Vega C is really exciting milestone for Europe. Well, Vega C, no, no, look, still, oh, the Laris 2, yeah, there it's it really is. beautiful. But uh, yes, Vega C is opening a new era for the space transportation in Europe. It will be yeah, the seven, first yeah, of a know, set of uh, portfolio of services that we will bring yeah, uh, the poor birds. independent access to space. <coughs> we with its versatility, then we will have its big brother, Ariane 6, that will share with Vega C. Okay, we're coming up on the allumage of the album. So, fourth stage ignition. We will have the 
space rider for this yeah Nimoy there was there was a rocket launch a little bit earlier I, I, I missed the rocket lab launch I was I couldn't have gotten this and that one at the same time experiments in microgravity and we will have the new version of the Vega C the Vega evolution with a brand new third stage Vega yeah, Evolution. Third stage in the evolution. They said that it was a novelty for Europe. Lancia Delta Evolution. Because it will be a liquid methane, liquid oxygen, uh, new. Uh, now, rocket rock launches always wake me up, Salty. This means that we will have Did Rocket Lab recover? They were not doing recovery on this one. Addressing also one important but point we should have another Rocket Lab launch in about two or three days. European Space Agency yep. 2025 agenda of our director in addressing the green objective. And also, we will uh, substitute the third and fourth stage of the Vega C with this, this new third stage. So, one stage instead of two. So, we reduce the cost, we increase performance, we increase competitiveness. Yeah, so we are truly high now. We are. The, Miss we French are, Guiana is there. Almost three times the uh, height of the ISS, and we're still. Hey, what so up? May have mentioned. They may have heard that. Like the, the rocket launch? Hell yeah. Ballistic flight. It's a bit like. <laughs> what up? Ball. And just watching when it is Rocket Lab going to fly from Wallops? Is, is uh, I'm not sure, Jim. Maybe later this year. Gravity acting upon it, so there's the only forces there. So we have five avenues. Yeah, stealthy. With turns. nothing's so changed. Final stage Ten years, nothing's changed. I'm still sleep deprived. I'm sleep deprived for a decade, man. Uh, to do, and the first of those is going no, to be coming no up. No, no spinala, about, not yet. Uh, 40, 40 seconds. Uh, but we can, but we can see that the Avam stage is maneuvering around in in the animation. It is is it actually doing that out in space? Absolutely yes, because uh, it has to orientate. <laughs> when do they turn on the disco the lights the and we'll be able to see it from New Zealand? <laughs> Uh, I don't think we'll be able to see it. It's too high, Simon. First burn that will give All right, stand by for the fourth stage ignition, the Avum ignition. Okay, parameters are nominal. It's still normal at the moment. This is absolutely fantastic, picture perfect. And uh, that Give us an onboard, guys. Come on. The live footage of on the, on the screen. Uh, there is the, on the animation. Let's let's listen to the detail. There we have confirmation. Okay. Uh, yes. Four stage ignition. Stay tuned to hear about Laris because it is a, an amazing Laris two. It's an amazing satellite. Uh, we have confirmation that from the they're lining up the, the longest putt Plus ever. What about your short game? Four minute burn. So uh, we're now in that look. phase of the mission. The camera is and everything's normal. Uh, we're less. It's a less about getting. Everything's calm. <laughs> uh, we're getting off the. It's less about getting off the planet now, isn't it? We, we're not using these solid rocket boosters, which are <laughs> essentially jackhammers to get your way out of Earth's gravity. Oh. Uh, now we're in that stage of the uh, rocket yeah. where we're trying to use a little yeah. bit more yeah, of the, the nips this rather is, than that this is doing it for power. Me. So uh, of you course, know, killer fun. We spent about three. Three hours looking at those pictures yesterday. We got more coming tomorrow. Propulsion is nominal. And still everything nominal and calm. This person got destroyed by the ESA. What happened? Solid rocket motors. Their principle of functioning is like a firework. You ignite, they burn, they expire. We get rid of them. But then you need something that has the to be reignited. Why? Look at look at this. Metaphor. Think about the goal. If you want to reach the goal, so you. The onboard cams. At the beginning, because you this time's animations for the public. What a waste of time! Like this. <laughs> but then it is very difficult to do all in one. You need. I would say nuke from orbit, but the Plus is doing exactly this. That's not entirely wrong. Is the propulsion model, the liquid propulsion model, with the capability to be reignited and ensure the fine and precise pointing and injection into the orbit. Yeah, for we all would, man. By our payloads. That P120C is one hell of a driver as well. So the Avon doesn't guy. just have yeah, one thruster, though, does it? She gets out of the hole now, real quick. We have the main engine, main engine that is burning now, uh, and we, in fact, we call uh, Mia, so main engine Avon. And then we have nominal. propulsion still. Yeah, the fairings do the whoop, 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 whoop. And parameters still nominal. And we have uh, two additional small thrusters. They are called Can the ESA just do you guys' launch coverage instead of road to space? The attitude 
of the rocket all along its mission, but most importantly, also to ensure that the payload is released exactly in the way and in an attitude he wants to. Yeah, I wish I could uh, adjust the attitude of my kids. Uh, the, the little brass-coloured objects on the black cone, the dispenser that you see in the animation, uh, are, they, are they the rack thrusters? Yeah, correct. They, yeah. Wow, yeah. What? I like these guys. The barbecue. These guys are pretty funny. Talk us through exactly what on earth the barbecue manoeuvre is. Yes, we are. Yes, this works. I like these guys. These guys are great commentators. That's pretty funny. It's a barbecue. It means a slight. Uh, yeah, I wish I could adjust the attitude of my kids, those little little brats. And we do this no, the drama, that's funny as hell. I love it. Spinning into the uh, sky, yeah. into the sky, uh, stability. So a little bit of, start, little bit of dry, witty humor in there. I like it. I like it. These guys should commentate every European launch. We, this way, we make homogeneous the temperature all along the structure. That's we pretty funny. On one side, you have the sun. On the other side, you have the oh, space. Man. So very different temperatures. <laughs> this can create distortion and too big solicitation to the structure. So you make it rotate so that the Kitty, as well as cool. Like well, she she does a good job. I like Katie. She's one of my favorite European commentators. Very uh, well cooked on all the sides. Yeah, so we're about to have this confirmation. The bareback fairing plus burn. So we'll comment the was flight one of the funniest things. I don't think it was supposed to be funny, but that was one of the funniest and, uh, we'll things. All right, ballistically. Stand by for Avum engine cutoff. Extinction avum. Yes, we are waiting for the waiting for flight it. director I, well, yeah, to I, announce I, <laughs> for the extinction. <laughs> there the is on the animation. Stage. He seems very unconconcerned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anticipating uh, the, the, what is... Okay. The parameters are so normal. So nominal parameters still, and here we have a very nice view again of this earth that is not becoming flat, it's still round. <laughs> <laughs> Look, really amazing. Still round. And, mm, okay. After this uh, distinction of the um, album burn, we will have what we call a ballistic phase. So yeah. a long phase in which the engine will no more propel St the rocket. St but still in round. Case, uh, it will continue moving along its orbit around the oh, earth, dear. waiting for the next burn. And uh, we do this because we want to optimize everything. And instead of Extinction de la boom. Okay, now we have the confirmation from the flight director, so we have the extinction of the first burn. So we will have this quite long coasting phase, we call it coasting phase, before making the second ignition. So yes, this is the last of the major milestones for about 45 minutes. So Dante and myself will be taking a breather from all the, all that tension, all that build up. It has been an amazing launch so far. That that everything's normal and we we saw that what a way it jumps off the launch pad. Absolutely incredible and the sound in the Jim. building when it finally I reached us was absolutely off putting. Didn't expect it. No, I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. <laughs> we were we're braiding it. <laughs> so we're gonna, if we're gonna we're gonna stop our broadcasting for there's so the barbecue roll normal and we got beautiful Jim you might get your wish here of, the, of, the, <laughs> of this glitter ball so uh, we're going to leave you in the case oh come on of this come on show the earth no no come, come back please will be real up please until the point where we lose Asqual for a bit for about 15 minutes but it will be picked up again by the nor new nausea station in Australia one of the S-Track Earth stations so, so they're for thermal conditioning they're gonna slow roll the stage they're rolling it <clears throat> so we'll see uh, after the break. to make sure the Sun doesn't like cook one side of the stage what is the purpose of the disco ball it's literally a gravioli detector from Kerbal drummer it's measuring general relativity anyway so the next step here is about an hour out Actually, no, less than that. It's about 40 minutes out, dude. So that's where I'm going to call it, fellas. That was fun. But I'm going to take a little bit of a break here. Unless you want to keep going with the commentary, there's not much. Did you say ravioli detector? Gravioli detector. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a, one of the scientific experiments from Kerbal. There is a replay. 
Thank you for the awesome stream. My pleasure. Yeah, we'll uh, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll get the update updates there uh, a little bit later. Everything went really well here. Everything went really well. That was the that was a great that was a great that was a great cast. Really good. I'm uh, I'm proud 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 of those European guys. They did a good job. It was a real that was a good cast. Good cast. Good mission. So. Can you show lift off again? I missed the first 30 seconds. You want to see this thing fly? Man, she she went. That P120C really had some kick behind it. Here, this this is a replay, guys, of the launch. I'll show that and then I'm then I'm going to head out. I'll be back in like 2 hours, something like that. This watch. 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 Oh. See ya! Dude! That's really fast. I like it. I like it. The very first Vegas C on her inaugural flight, clipping the mast, like you said in a And it's gone. Just see it through the cloud. Oh, it's a technology high on the leading end of life there. No! No way! No way! Hold on, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. No way. Listen to the commentator, the British guy. The very first Vegas C on her inaugural flight, clipping the mast, like you said in a blink of an eye. Just see it through the cloud. Oh, it's a technology high on the leading end of life. Oh, rush quote! Yeah! Joking, it's like George Russell in a racing car. Who is this guy? Dude, he quoted Countdown. The, the tech technology high, bam, 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 on the leading edge of life. Do, 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 do. That that's Countdown. That that's that's Russia's song about launching rockets. Hell yeah, hell yeah. This guy should commentate every launch. Every launch. Yep. And then, and then an F1 fan on top of that Mercedes fan, but an F1 fan nonetheless. We are following the rocket, of course, because it's visually it's out, it's out of sight. I can actually hear it from the Jupiter Control Center now. But Dude, this happen. guy should commentate. He should commentate every launch. Every launch. He's freaking fantastic. It's uh, not telemetry, uh, telemetry synced. So although we see things happening on the screen, we will wait for. And then do we agree on that with Whitney? Yeah, yeah. That guy is fantastic. He should commentate every launch. Fantastic. He quoted Rush, and he's an F1 fan. Yes. Yeah. No. That. Yeah. That guy should just. Yeah. Nope. This guy should commentate. Dude, screw Road to Space. This guy should commentate. These two should commentate every launch. Every single one of them. What if he's a Red Bull fan? No, he, he he said he said it shot off like George Russell in a race cars. Don't worry, he's not a fan of piss drink. Oh, I want to keep I want to keep going. I want to keep going, dude. Hey, he, he he's a George Russell fan. I don't mind that. George Russell's a good driver. Okay, it's all right. He's just driving, just driving for the wrong team. Okay. okay. <laughs> Squaw's like, I'm a fan of piss drink team. Not Sains? Not a Sains fan. Hmm. Onboard Cam, how dare they? Team piss drink. Piss drink motorsports. Yeah, F1 just got finished driving at piss drink circuit. I actually found that F1 and F1 Motorsports and Rocketry Aviation have a relatively big intersection. Yes, I mean, most people that like rockets like racing. It's it's the same thing. F1 might as well be aerospace engineering. Sains and Checo. Okay. Go Max and Checo. Max! Ew. Por qué? Sains! Sains! Vamos, Carlos! Yep. It's spinning, microwave. They're they're spinning it for thermal, so one side doesn't bake in the sun. The the Apollo program did that when it was coasting. They 
they rotated the lem and the CSM on the way out to the moon. It was slowly spinning, just like that. Yeah, it's called a barbecue roll. Yep. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's called the barbecue roll maneuver. It's like a slow cooker, like rotisserie chicken style. And it's the exact same idea. You got heat coming from one direction. And you don't want to cook one side and not the other. So you just try spinning. That's a good trick. Nah, it's just a kebab. Hey, I mean, Gladi, if we want to get down on some kebabs and euros, I'm good with that. I'm okay with that too. That's fine. Now I'm hungry. Why? Why did you why did you even do that? Damn it! Now I want kebabs. Damn it, man. Oh, now I'm hungry. All right. Guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get food. I'm gonna go get food. I will be back in about two hour fifteen from now. Why is the least healthy option always the tastiest? I don't know. No. But but I will be back moment well not momentarily in about two hours. Uh, I will give you mission updates here when when I get back. Uh, everything is going very, very well with the inaugural Vegas Sea launch. It was really good. Commentary was great. Launch is great thus far. Everything's going perfect, which is really good. I'm really, I'm really happy for our European counterparts. Seriously, that's good stuff. Good stuff. All right. <clears throat> I'll be back in a little bit. Here, you know what I'll do? I'll link up the cast that I was watching in case anybody wants to go check it out. I'll see you guys in about two hours. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you in a little bit.